difficult audio this evening playing in a Charleston courtroom today where Dylan Roof is on trial for the murders of nine black worshipers at a Bible study. Surveillance video showing Roof walking into that church, then leaving the church with the gun in his hand. The jury now seeing video of Roof at target practice in his own backyard. And tonight you will hear the audio from a survivor who called 911. That survivor saying Roof approached her and asked, did I shoot you yet? ABC's Steve Osinsami is in Charleston. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming, please. Okay. Hers is the voice on this call for help, desperately trying to hide under one of these tables while a gunman determined to kill black people is shooting her friends dead. She didn't know it at the time, but he had plenty of target practice seen here in his backyard with the same gun. Did you see him at all? Yes, he's a young 21 year old white dude. He's got it in his hand. He's reloading. How many shots has he fired? I don't know. There's so many. Oh, God, please. Her church friends call her Miss Polly. And by the time Polly Shepard finished telling her story of survival today, nearly everyone in the packed courtroom stood on their feet to show her love. But there's so many people dead, I think. Oh, my God. Miss Polly was the last witness in the case against 22-year-old Dylan Roof. She says they had just bowed their heads to pray in this room when the young white man they welcomed to their Bible study started shooting in this historic black church. Nine of her closest friends died. Can you talk to me freely? No, I can't. I'm really in the building. Just come in the back door. She told jurors, he asked me, did I shoot you yet? I said no. He said, I'm going to leave you alive to tell the story. He laughs it off in this FBI confession. Do you remember telling that lady, I'm going to let you live so you can tell my story? Or something? Yeah, I don't remember saying that. She tells us she's been frightened since. Tonight, the brother of Cynthia Hurd, shot seven times, says Roof deserves to die. And she deserved the right to die with dignity and respect. Uh, and he took that away from her. And Steve Osinsami with us live tonight from Charleston. And Steve, you were in that courtroom for this testimony today. Uh, David, yes, it was a difficult day for families on both sides of the courtroom. We saw many of them leaving through these courthouse doors directly behind me with tear stains on their faces, but not Dylan Roof. He sat there staring into space. His lawyers didn't even call a single witness. So closing arguments will begin in the morning.